I see here. both edges. How far, is, how far does it go this way? Here's, oh. the, here's the end of it, here. I didn't bring one of those things. I brought brushes, gloves. I brought a shovel. I didn't. <laughs> And I don't have a car either, so. so but I can get. I've got some flat bladed shovels, but I, don't, I didn't know about if that was. Here's the. Yeah, there's the break right here. Okay, so it goes the grass the is growing through the break. That's why. That's all right. That's how you knew it was already broken. Well, I can tell by that picture that yeah. was originally on there, right? Right. Yeah. You got the top? Yep. Yeah. This is a recent hobby of mine here too, y'all, so I'm not any good at this either. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all know who this is, right? Well, we know it's the uh, husband of Elizabeth that we cleaned that stone already. So how did and you that pick was your this first one? stone, right? It was, it was, it was so dirty, I said, it was so dirty, let's do this one first. Here. And you know who it is. This man and this woman owned the property where you guys were live. Correct. Yes. yes. Oh. And, right? Uh, <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Very, and it was, I think they said it was their first stall that they picked. Or one of the it was, it was yeah. kind of weird. William B. Wiley was born in 1811 in Chester County, South Carolina. He married Elizabeth Ann Wiley before 1842, and over the next 13 years had six daughters. Upon his move to Catawba Township, he became an elder in the ARP Church at Neely's Creek, where he was a member until his death in 1889. So how do y'all support that when you pick it up, just on the edges? Yeah, we tip it this way, mm -hmm. and then we'll probably get it out of the ground and then lay it back. We could actually tip this one probably straight this way too, because uh, the base is strong. But I would rather. I'd rather tip it sideways. There's a cemetery down at um, Lansford Canal. Have y'all been to that one? Uh, I haven't been to the cemetery, but I've been to Lansford. If you're going to Lansford Canal, after you get off of 21, on the left is the cemetery. It's not very well kept. Um, it's, mm -hmm. called, it's called Old Stone Cemetery. Okay. And it's got more Wileys in it. <laughs> That's the oldest Wiley that we can yeah. find. There, right there, right? <clears throat> yep. Do you think that's broken somewhat down there? Uh, that's, it, it's possible. Yeah. It looks like it's at least chipped, right? Well, and it, I mean, it looks like with this dome, they had to it's, it's, rebond that it's in. It's fell at some too. point too, hadn't it? So I wonder why they faced the west, the east. Uh, it's biblical. The new day or something? Uh, the Jesus will uh, come into the east. Uh, from on the sunrise uh, from the east, so every grave sets towards the east. Be careful with it. The help. So we'll have to come out here and build something to prop that in there till it sets, right? We're gonna yeah, give it a fill of a bonding agent and a frame, right? Plan to clean this one, right? Oh yeah. yeah I, well, <clears throat> we can take it to Buddy's Buddy's yeah, shop. He's got a good shop for that. I can. I can. First. Actually, I brought some cleaner for today. We can scrub it real quick and just throw it in the back of your vehicle, yeah. or okay, and then take it and we'll okay go from there. Okay. All right. On the on the website that I sent you guys, we both read it completely. <laughs> <laughs> there's um, I think there's a section that talks about D2. Yeah. And there's a light color starting to show up. I get some of those years of dirt off there, too. I know, man. Hey, Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Tom did say you had to be really careful about the spirits in your shop while this is there. <laughs> well, I got an evil spirit in there already. I'm going to go get my head. I think usually like. Seven that's the best thing old. for you to hit though, buddy. That's the hardest thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think what you're going to be missing on this stone is this area right here. Yeah, that's what I So when it broke, it chipped us away and it's disintegrated. And it's gone. So, you know, that's okay as long as you got a good bonding edge. You know, at mm -hmm. least it'll be bonded. I think you do. If I look at, you know, right there, it looks like it's going to bond. Yeah. Far left? It's not bad. Right here. Yeah. It's not bad though. No, it's not so bad. The front... Squat down and take a look. There's definitely some green bond. Yeah. You got the stone? Side? You got it, Brandon? Yep. 
being documented, don't drop it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have fruit. Yeah. But maybe try to center it on the table. Sure, we're going. Let me get this out of the way. By this point, we had decided to take the two pieces back to the shop to come up with a plan. We got in touch with Jonathan Appel with Atlas Preservation, and Jonathan told us that the bottom of the stone would have to be cut so that it would fit back into the base and be mortared in. The failure at the bottom of the stone was most likely the original reason the stone was on the ground. The break in the middle of the stone most likely happened after it was laid down. So our new plan was to cut the stone at the shop and mend the two pieces at a later date in the cemetery. I think the first thing that we'll want to do is let's get all of our measurements. Okay. Um, I wrote down everything this morning just to confirm. Buddy is right. It was, uh, it is two inches. Two inches. So what we're going to do is carve like this out. Mm -hmm. Okay. On each side. Yeah. So it is 15 and three quarter long mm -hmm. by two inches by two inches. That's real fun. Do we want to measure? Yeah. I mean, the worst thing to do, worst case scenario, if we come in more on the sides, yeah. we just put more mortar in there. Yeah, okay. Look what the ground has done to this, man. That's, I know. That's so sad. The pictures show the damage at the bottom of the stone as well as our pencil mark as to where we plan to cut the corners out so that it could be dropped back into the base. The bottom half of the marker had also become warped from sitting on the ground for so many years so we had to grind the face and the rear for it to be able to be straight enough to go back into the base. Pollen and marble dust. I can't Whew. believe how much pollen is already out. I've never seen it this early before. No. You want it? Your car, my car? You can put it in the back seat okay. of my car. Um, might be passenger side, might be better. All right. All right. We ready for this moment of truth? Yeah. <laughs> We're close. Got Real got close. Very perfect. That's all the way down, isn't it, or is it? No, not on this side. There's a little. A little bit that needs to be shaved there. We had left just a little too much material on one side, so we had to file away just a bit more. Using a small file, we were able to remove the material and make the stone fit in perfectly. It was at this point that we had to figure out how to deal with the warping and the bowing of this bottom piece. That's pretty level, right? Yeah. How's that, that other side? Well, we don't know if it's... That other side, that might, that side might be warped. Yeah. The level on the right side. Yeah. That side might just be warped. I would say they didn't cut it square to begin with. Yeah, that could be too. <laughs> All right. Taper off, right? Yes. With most of us being fairly new to this, we tried to take as many precautions as we could. We decided to tape off the top of the base and then add tape to the bottom of the marker to help keep the mortar from drying on it. We then mixed the mortar in the pail to the recommended consistency and poured a liberal amount into the base. After just a little bit of prep work, we were ready to set the marker back into the base for the first time in who knows how many years. Sitting the tablet back into the base displaced a good bit of the mortar. At this point, we spread that mortar around the entirety of the junction of the tablet and the base. We made the decision to wrap it with plastic food wrap to help with the curing process. We planned to give it at least a week to cure.
Would you ever thought in your lifetime, buddy, you'd be doing something like this? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I was going to ask you guys the same thing when, uh, Scott, you were uh, shaving down the front mm -hmm. of the... No, never. <laughs> Come on, give me, give me a phone just a little bit, Scott, if you will. Don't let me abuse that stuff. That's probably good. Yeah. So when we come back, we'll take all that apart and epoxy the top of it to it and call it a project. Yep. Okay. All right, so I bet we didn't bring the drill. No, but I mean, we, we can just need it. take these off. I should say. <laughs> it's, it's pretty, I mean, there's a little bit of moisture up there, but it's not bad. It'll dry quick in that mm -hmm. sunlight, I think. I feel good about it. You down here if you decide you want it to. It doesn't even look too far off. Like, that one looks, right. you know, very discolored. Yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad. I think it's a. I think it looks great. Man, that's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Got a good bit of loss up here. I think the back's better, except for that one place. Isn't it? Yeah, I'm worried about. A couple places that we can actually see through it too. All right, that's good. Got it. Let's um clean that. Yep. Then. I'll clean it if you want to start mixing epoxy. No. Put them on these two spoons. Okay. Put that one on that spoon. I'm mm -hmm. gonna mix them in here. Mm -hmm. We're. I'm gonna take the spoon and I'm gonna spoon it along the edge. Mm -hmm. We'll set the top on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we'll make sure it's good. We will use clamps and the board to get it to stay. And then we'll work on filling the areas that are exposed. So two of these. I would help you, but this thing is kind of moving around a little bit. one and then we're going 
gonna do two A and A. Yep, good. All right, and then I'll make you a man with the marble. Perfect, okay. Here we mix the two parts of the epoxy together, along with the crushed white marble, until the point of rejection. All right, let's see if I have the necessary skill. I think you do. Yeah, man. This procedure is done to fill the cracks with the appearance of a similar stone-like material. We were somewhat limited in how well we could do this due to the large size of the break in the stone. All right, you'll pull the claps off? Yeah. I think we're about to see something pretty cool here. Something that's been this upright for the first time on its own in probably years. That's right. So we'll fill these areas in. Okay. We can chip a little bit of this off too. That looks... So at this point, we just need to come back and just saturate this with D2 and let it sit. Is that is that how it's going to work? Yeah, we're going to, well, we're going to scrub on it too. Okay. We're going to saturate it with D2, let it sit on there for about 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. And then we're going to uh, scrub and spray more D2 on there. Thank you to everyone who's had a hand in this project. If you've enjoyed this content, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.